introducing Vajaco. He has a confirmation that will be interesting for the subscribers to follow for his future passage and piaf and changes in pirouettes. These are different thoroughbreds, some very famous and some paintings of the different confirmations. And amongst other things, the confirmation has a great deal to do with how the horse naturally moves. By t breaking it down at Global Equine Perspective with the schematics and things that technology give us today, I'll be able to unfold with Pajaco's future endeavors as he goes up the ladder of dressage and jumpers uh, and show you the different aspects of how these different conformations come together. This is Bajaco. As you can see, he has a longish back, but his neck matches his back. This is a baby fetus. They lie in a circle for pretty near 11 months. And this is the gallops in Ireland. So depending on where you are and what kind of structure your horse has at the core, at its physical core conformation, it presents a huge difference in how you approach, whether it be uh, the flat work for jumpers or the flat work to, to make an upper level dressage horse or the infrastructure. We have special sensor gloves that we're developing and researching now for uh, continuing with the suit and the horse suit, which will help demonstrate what I'm doing here a lot just see the head go up and oh my oh me. Well I'm facilitating an access to that right shoulder. With the suit and the gloves you'll see that sometimes my fingers are an ounce and sometimes they're not. In different positions where I want to keep his spine parallel to the ground, his hips square and his, as much access to his shoulders as possible. So the locomotions and the isometrics and the muscle memory are going to be unfolded. This is an earlier video in, uh, a couple of months ago and so I'm, he's further along now but uh, amongst putting the older podcasts together you'll be able to see how much he's not only filled in over the top line but also he's starting to balance himself. Here's a picture of just going straight and all my job is to do is to keep all four feet the same weight, the spine parallel to the ground, and the hunch is square. Some of these steps, if you break it down, uh, looks sort of like a rock and roll shoulder in or whatnot, but be, due to his long back, we're not going for the scope of the two track, we're just getting him to self-balance himself and be strong enough to go straight on his own volition without any interference at all from the rider or long reiner. Also at Global Equine Perspective we're going to be showing the ins and outs and the infrastructure of what we do in the barn, the leg work, and uh, how the riders, grooms, farriers uh, interact with specific horses careers and in doing so it, it shows the feelings of how the horse is uh, even though they're getting uh, 14 uh, quarts of grain a day and uh, are getting quite fit their behavior is peaceful and um, good race horses are like that but I want to unfold how you build the infrastructure to have this happen it doesn't just sort of by luck you have the horse that can do it it's you present to the horses this is more recently as you can see he's more filled in and he's getting uh, a mastery over the impulsion with his haunches and this winter as we go towards the passage and uh, changes and uh, more in-depth uh, to track work that he's bending through the rib and not using his head and neck. As his haunches lower and he masters them more
more, then the head and neck won't be so used to counterbalance his uh, weaker right hind or his left hind that doesn't want to stretch as deep underneath himself. And this is another reason why I, I love to use uneven ground. Because to reach those muscles on a longer back torso like this um, isn't a matter of routine and doing a billion circles and a billion two track steps in the shoulder and or traverse or inverse. has to do with his balance and relaxation and using that lower back to lift his limbs. And um, as you can see here, the gravity and how he dropped his head and relaxed his spine is helping me get him to that place of effortlessness um, and not throwing himself off balance with his con his confirmation taking over by gravity and impulsion. As they get stronger, you facilitate more of a position of not just the haunches uh, dropping but the back coming up and um, this is this is what I want to show uh, on different confirmations and there's quite a few different confirmations that we have but um, specifically this horse because he's sort of been combating if you will uh, gravity uh, because of his back and as he fills in uh, he'll look shorter coupled than when we started out. I have pictures of him starting out. So it's interesting uh, how, how they fill in uh, and they come together. And, and for people that have not seen him when he had no muscling at all, they'd say, oh, he's a really nice coupled horse. <laughs> when in fact, when I started out, he looked like a Learjet. <laughs> but um, this is a sort of a rock and rolled uh two-track exercise I do and um, as he, he gets more sophisticated with the new muscles over his lower back and his uh, push-off power and his deep inside muscles of his haunches um, and as you see he's hopping there so he doesn't have to step under and keep his uh, haunches square all I'm doing is lifting his head and neck out of the way to keep those haunches square and the spine or and or chakra straight parallel with the ground um, and also keeping that inside shoulder uh, open in another moment here he starts doing it on his own volition and that's another reason why I'm excited about the gloves uh, because you'll see when I'm interacting directly and when I'm just being there passively and the horse is using your hand as much like a ballerina does the bar uh, not to hang on or pull or push but just to have as a balance much like a curb bit was meant to do um, now this is the shot when he started he started uh, to he's just balancing um, if I had the sensor gloves on you'd see about two ounces but he's also keeping his um, haunches engaged this time he's not doing the crow hop he's reaching underneath and he's keeping most importantly his um, haunches square and you'll see how wide he gets the steps that's how big and uh, grasping his uh, half passes are going to be and it'll be in the same tempo it won't be uh, rushing for another step to the ground and the suspension this is also uh, an exercise to get more suspension if you like uh, it's sort of a jazzed rock and roll of half of a Travers or Renevers um, forget about the front end except it needs to be uh, light and out of the way but really the latter half so I sort of you know and even with this um, weird looking rain back he's still staying straight and square on his haunches and his spine is still parallel to the ground so the rain back in dressage a lot of dressage people may not know this and see how he squares up so equally behind um, was not just to uh, have the judge uh, or judges know that the horse is cooperating it was also an exercise 
the rein back uh, is a real demonstrative exercise and you have to be careful to have the muscles in place because if the muscles aren't there it goes straight to the bone and tendon and um, and if you're not um, understanding of that you can pop a curb and you can get um, lower back problems because they're not rising their back lowering their haunches and a lot of problems can come from this I'm using the hill to go down and I'm lifting my hands up to keep him from rolling over in front and stepping uh, and still step underneath him so even this small little exercise going down the hill in those small steps I'm reaching muscle groups in his lower back in his in, inside muscles of his haunches by doing those 20 steps rather than if you had trotted straight ahead for five miles um, basically because I'm not relying on on getting uh, the horse tired to go to access the muscles they don't they don't usually use I'm using the posture and the gravity and the impulsion to go to those muscles without wasting the horse's energy and or um, pounding the bone so it's quality of steps not quantity this is the same session and you can see his equilibrium and he's using from his tail all the way up through his pole and his jaw is all relaxed and he's keeping his spine himself parallel to the ground I'm just there uh, really again uh, putting my hand up in the air they see it and it lifts it lifts them up so they're so they keep more centered or they keep their chi as they say <laughs> this is the cool out which probably is the most important part I would say of any workout because not only does it get rid of the lactic acid that we built up in the harder exercise some of which you saw earlier but it gets the oxygen back into the blood and it and the mind of the horse uh, gets very relaxed so it's the last thing they 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 see or feel from each session every day that way you don't have a soured horse this is Bojack in the arena and um, if you saw our first canter that we did you would have totally thought I was crazy but I was keeping him balanced and now that he's getting his center core balance and he's starting to maintain his uh, over the top line uh, easier now that previous canter was to the left which was off the right hind the right hind is a new structure uh, in enfolding it it doesn't have as much imprinting or muscle memory as the left hind and as you can see here it uh, I have to keep his head and neck away so that he stays all four feet the same amount of weight and um, he's used to using his left hind the way he's done his muscle mem memory all his life and um, you'll see in this ride how he relaxes and then goes into his new muscle memory as Bojack gets his new muscle memory and his top and bottom line come together joining the haunches up through to the rider's hand and it's effortless it's not something that uh, you're, you know have to do exaggerate your arms or displace his head and neck then you'll see the canter canners come together so easily and the flying changes come together true no cross flying changes because the horse becomes one piece again here's the the cool out where they they stretch and it's just self balance and um, I want him to even reach and unglue so to speak that pole even further and totally unlock it so it, it his um, old muscle memory of putting his uh, nose down or behind the vertical and I think here is a piece where he does start stretching his nose out but you have to do it in little there yeah see and that was a transition into the walk but as his nose comes out you'll see in the coming months uh, the subscribers will see this horse to walk trot and canter 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 on the buckle all stretched out uh, and totally totally relaxed so when I come when we come up through 
into the bridle, and the horse's or Bojack's haunches are strong enough to drop and rise up because the head position comes from the dropping of the haunches and the back coming up, not the face coming to the rider. And so you'll see us go back and forth from collections to long and low, collections and long and low. I slowed this walk down so it can express um, the equilibrium and the straightness of his spine and the straightness of his tail um, and the dock of his tail. Um, I have earlier uh, things where his tail rides, his dock of his tail goes to a certain direction. And um, on certain rides, depending on uh, what we're doing that day, and as you can see, he, squ he squares up. There's a tin halt all by himself. So I didn't put him there. It was because he was already square and his haunches were equally pushing off from behind. When one hind leg's pushing off more than the other, or using itself, distri distributing its weight, you won't have uh, a square halt every single time. Uh, and you'll be fiddling with the horse. When a horse is straight through the spine, and as you can see, he's totally relaxed, and he's quite fit, so don't think he's... Uh, a lot of that long, low stuff I've seen over the last 20 years is really remarkable, especially in the thoroughbreds, uh, because um, I can take a righteous racehorse in it and uh, go into that, and it totally looks like they've uh, been uh, given a relaxation pill or something, but it, it hits a part of their brain and relaxes their pull. So when they have, uh, when Bojack has works, sometimes he goes off and does a big buck and plays, but I like to reward them, and this will be part of watching Bojack go up the levels uh, this winter um, towards his uh, premier freestyle. So he goes and relaxes and does his thing. I even find a lot about horses, especially certain horses, this one in particular. How many times does he roll? And it tells you a lot of, you know, how much to the core of that horse that you trained that day. And I'm um, excited about the muscle suit because um, it'll give an understanding of how deep uh, muscles that we're actually training without going uh, fast and, and furious. So I kind of uh, playing with him here. He, he likes to play. And then he has his independence. That's another really important factor. Whether it be dressage, jumpers, racehorses, they uh, I've knock on wood, I've never had one go sour when I'm training uh, like this diligently. Not to say I, I necessarily like, I don't usually let the racehorses off, but they learn how to roll on the end of my line and jump up in the air and play a little bit. Um, when I started this horse, he did not do a true canter. <laughs> he was that separated from his haunches. And now he does little changes all in his own, own volition. So, Bojack is going to encompass a lot. Uh, different physics for different uh, horses and how you get them to their potential. Um, watching a horse get his first passage and changes and canter canters and have it effortless and not a strain for him or the riders. And um, how that all happens because part of it is this is as important as the training. So, I hope uh, that this will be fun for people to see, and uh, with the sensor suits and gloves and the new technology of today's uh, internet and all the wonderful people around the world, it'll be a joy to share. Thank you.